So actually, we have a question from viewer in Stearns County who wants to talk about elder abuse and wondering if that's something that's going to see some action in this session. It would seem to me that would come under, I know we've had some questions about assisted living and, mm -hmm. and licensing and abuse issues there over the course of the last several months. Um, is that something that comes out of your committee? Uh, well, we have the money for the nursing homes and assisted livings in our, in our committee. Actually, uh, Senator Housley mm -hmm. uh, has the committee for aging where they did the policy work and the, the oversight is actually in the health committee run by Senator Benson. Um, it is a mess. Um, we uncovered it uh, in the aging committee last spring when they talked about how they only investigated less than 10% of all the complaints. So your mother or somebody's grandmother has an incident at a nursing home or an assisted living. In less than 10% of the cases, did they even bother to investigate? Mm -hmm. And they were, and it was like horrifying. Mm -hmm. I told them my teeth fell out of my head and I was shocked and I said if I was the CEO, Mr. Commissioner, you, I would be there on weekends making calls and mm -hmm. working on this and there was mm -hmm. no urgency from, from the department. Well, the, and so, yeah. and then they, uh, yeah, and then they fired that, fired Dr. Allinger as commissioner and, and but, uh, and he's a good man, but it just, it was a horrifying matter and so actually the Senate has led with some strength in this topic. And in a, in a, I think a bipartisan way, we're very strong trying to find a way to get oversight and change not just how you watch it, but actually what's going on. And to have uh, standards for assisted living, to have credentialing and, and uh, upgrade what we expect. And hopefully that'll come forward. The House has been a little softer on that. And so I'm um, urging my good colleagues there to come along and to actually show our concern for seniors at risk and people with disabilities that are at risk that we Zoom are going to be fine. You know, there's there's two things about this. One is I've had, and I think everybody that's elected has had the sore horror stories come back to them from their own district. And the stories that I've heard from residents in my district have been like you said, the teeth fall out right on your head, and that's that's problematic. But I think there's even a bigger, uh, long-term issue we got to look at here. And you know, how does a commissioner who's well respected spend that much time there? and not know under his nose this is going on, I imagine, because over yeah. time this has been brewing, right? And what boggles my mind and will always boggle my mind about government, and this isn't the Republican-Democrat thing, it's not like we didn't know baby boomers were retiring. Mm -hmm. It's not like we didn't know the infrastructure necessary to provide for and take care of these groups was going to be needed and that regulation oversight was necessary when you start talking about for-profit organizations, right? When you have for-profit organizations in charge of people's health care, it goes south, in my opinion. I don't think that's a good way to do it. And so I'm always boggled by the inability of our state government to plan ahead. And we do, and there's just countless examples of this, and this is just one of them. It's not like we didn't know this was going to happen, yet here we are, and now we're all like, oh my gosh, we got to do something to fix it, and we're surprised the problem came about. When anybody with half a sense could have seen you knew this bubble was coming and our structure was not prepared for it. We allowed for-profit things, obviously that's part of the game. They get to be running it and now we're talking about all these places that are not living up to the promises. And that's one of the things, and I'd love to hear your opinion on this. One of the things I hear over and over and over again was the promises made to get my father to come or my grandfather or my mom to go to this place, they weren't even close to being lived up with. And I think oh. if there's one thing that's going to be required for me to get the vote on Housley's bill, which I do believe we're trying to rise above the partisanship just to find a solution, you're going to have to address the fraud that goes on because the number of my residents that have talked about this where they go there they are promised all these things that was going to be this amazing yeah. life event and then the company could not follow through on it. Well I had the first bill back 15 years ago or something on this regulation and it was um, actually there there was an attorney general named Mike Hatch who was the attorney general at the time and he was attempting some reforms and they were controversial. The controversial reform I carried was that, that became law. If you say you're going to do something you have to do it. Right. That was the first reform, and it was controversial, and the, the providers did not want to have to do that. Mm -hmm. And still to this point, we're still arguing the very same thing. And the yeah. sales department doesn't always connect to the to the board, which is at some distant place that has a mission. Many of these are, are charitable, good groups, and they have no idea what goes on in the sales office. Mm -hmm. But it's wrong. And it's just, uh, we, uh, it's, there's two and a half weeks ample time to put something together and the plan that we've got going forward is a bunch of changes we can do now and then some planning going forward about how to credential assisted livings in particular. Mm -hmm. Nursing homes are scrutinized to death and most of these issues are not there. They're in these uh, board and lodge assisted livings that are springing up everywhere that are not bound by prices and not bound by much 
constraints, not bound to tell you who owns the place, not to tell you what their profit margins are, if they're for profit or non-profit. And uh, it's time for some reforms, and there's strong feelings, and very bipartisan. This is not at all a partisan matter, but it has to be done, and it's yeah. our duty. Yeah.